Hello everyone, welcome to week five. This is the assessment, postural assessment. Welcome back Nate, he's going to demonstrate for us today about uh, what we're going to go over the four different postures. Ideal posture, kyphosis, flat back, and sway back posture and how we can identify that easily. And then we'll go into the upper cross and lower cross syndromes and what that looks like. So if they would stand sideways for me, there you go. So ideal posture, like I stated in the, in the, uh, the handout, we want to start at ankle. I'm going to have you bring your feet about three to four inches apart. And get a little bit closer. There you go. And then uh, what we're going to start is we start at the fixed point. The ankle is always the fixed point where the upper body can deviate. So perfect uh, line that starts in right at the ankle, in front of the ankle, goes up through the knee, through the hip, through the shoulder, and through the ear. So that's what we want to see. We don't want to see any deviations. Uh, anterior posterior to that line. And you can refer to the handout to see see what that line looks like for ideal posture. Now for kyphosis, uh, the body becomes uh, curved in the thoracic spine. Okay, that big curve. And then the head juts forward for head forward posture. So you can see how the head goes anterior to that ideal line. The thoracic spine it is excessively curved, and then it goes into an excessive uh, curve in the, in the low back or low dosis, creating an anterior tilt. If we looked at upper cross, uh, the upper cross syndrome with kyphosis, rounded here, the shoulders roll forward, the shoulders become a little bit more forward of that line, anterior of that line. The pectoralis muscles are tight, upper track and levators are tight, so bring the, the shoulders up. Head forward posture, tightening up all the posterior muscles in the back, and of course, lengthening all the muscles in the front, those deep hip, hip, uh, neck flexors. Coming through here, the shoulder blades are now spread around the ribcage, successfully rounding forward, lengthening all the muscles in the back. So we'll have you change for, turn and face the wall. Again. And he's going to be uncomfortable in this position, but we'll get him out of it soon. But now you can see his shoulder blades are up and forward rather than go ahead to the normal posture, where they just sit and just relax for a little bit more in Where they sit even and, and about three inches away from the spine, okay? And then if he turns around and faces the camera in that curved posture, the shoulders are rounded forward so we can see that the pector pectorals are all tight and rounded forward and the upper traps and elevator are bringing, up, bringing the shoulders up towards the ear. And again, if the head juts forward, these SCM muscles and the scalene muscles become overactive and take over for the deep neck flexors. Okay, go ahead and relax. Let's have the face sideways again, right? Now for the lower cross syndrome, we create an anterior tilt. Paraspinals become tight in the back. Hip flexors become tight in the front, creating a hip flexion. The pelvis is tilted anteriorly or forward, which will lengthen the gluteal muscles, therefore inhibiting them and the, therefore becoming weak, the abdominals is the same thing. They get lengthened and become inhibited by the tight muscles. So that's our lower cross syndrome. Now the other postures, flat back, is simply the pelvis posteriorly tilts, which is opposite of the kyphosis or the anterior tilt. The paraspinals, uh, the lumbar spine becomes flat. The hamstrings are subject to the, being the tight uh, hyperactive muscle or the tonic muscle, shifting the pelvis posteriorly, which will, let, which will actually weaken the gluteal muscles because that will be the synergistic dominance factor where the hamstrings will start taking over for the gluteal muscles. In this situation, the iliopsoas is now, particularly the psoas muscle, is becoming lengthened and inhibited because of the position of the pelvis and the spine. So when we get to the corrective strategies, we'll, we'll add in how we're going to correct those and strengthen those. For the sway back posture, go ahead and relax. And the body, the upper body, sways back to the pelvis. The pelvis shifts forward, and what we have is another kyphosis. The pelvis in, uh, posteriorly tilts here, so there could be a hamstring tightness issue. The, the hip flexors become weak and inhibited and the gluteals become weak and inhibited also. So you can go over on, onto the description of all those uh, postures in your handout, you'll see that the relationship of those tonic and phasic muscles. Go ahead and relax. How'd that feel, okay? All right, so our goal is again, 
identify these postures, do the corrective exercises, so therefore we can move efficiently and effectively when we get into our foundational exercises. We're going to cover the, uh, the corrective exercise for each one of these postures in the next section.